Hi, my name is Charlie Mirton. I'm the group reporter for uh, Group 3. Today I'm going to be talking about the gas turbine experiment um, and just going over the results of it. First, we're going to go through the objectives, what we're supposed to be doing, and how we're supposed to be collecting our data. We're going to the apparatus and what makes this thing work. We're going to talk about how we actually collected the data and where we stored it, and how I analyze this data to come to my final conclusions. The objectives of this experiment are to understand the overall principles and operating procedures of this gas turbine, and also to report our temperatures, pressures, and thrust values, and that way we can perform calculations to quantify the overall efficiency and uh, performance of our gas turbine. So the gas turbine itself is composed of a compressor, combustion chamber, a turbine, and a nozzle. What happens is, Gas enters the compressor here, and this high pressure gas comes into the combustion chamber where it mixes with our fuel and ignites. It comes down and the air expands through the turbine, which in turn powers our compressor and then is exhausted outside uh, through the conversion nozzle. The actual brand cycle for this, right here we have from the compressor, uh, we have going, uh, gas going to the compressor, which is our isotropic process. And we have an isotherm process where it goes through the combustor and heat is added to the system after a time. Then we have uh, the gas coming back through the turbine, expanding, and then being ejected through the nozzle. And the overall theory is that our efficiency will increase as the pressure ratio increases. Uh, how I analyze my data to calculate the mass flow rate, which is the most important thing that we need to do for everything else, I use the first law of thermodynamics. And after that, the exit velocity is calculated using the formula that was given in our uh, manual. And then I calculated the fraction of energy released in the combustion chamber and the nozzle. <laughs> Moving on to my actual data, what I did was I calculated um, all these values for all the data given. We didn't perform the procedure this week because uh, the gas turbines are out of commission over here. So I used all the data showing how precise this machine actually is over time. There's over 100 trials, and you can still see that right here we have the old collected data and then red the factory results. And while the data is all pulled with the tread line, you can see how similar the slopes actually are, showing that the mass flow rate will increase as the RPMs increase. And the RPMs we took between 40,000 and 80,000. On to the velocity versus RPM. Uh, between 40,000 and 50,000, you see a slight pickup. Um, my understanding is that this is because the machine is just getting started pretty much, imagine warming up and there's just a slight irregularity at the beginning. But as you can see, after 60,000, the slope is similar to our factory results. Um, uh, and sorry, the bottom you can see my mean value of standard deviations for all these calculations. On to the fraction of fuel burn in the nozzle. Uh, this is what I thought was interesting. It shows that we have an increase in the fraction of fuel burned at the nozzle from 40,000 to 60,000, then again, it drops off. Uh, Unlike what I expected, I expected it to rise as the RPMs rose, showing that just because the high temperature and high pressure coming out of the nozzle, I expected more fuel be being burned. On to the fraction of energy released in the combustor. Uh, again, I think my calculations, are, I know my calculations are off, I have fractions of over one. I can't really understand why this is happening. We perform the experiment, I might have some more insight as to why these calculations are wrong. But the factory result is what I expected. Uh, as the RPMs increase, we're getting closer to 100% efficiency in the combustion. And then finally, our thrust versus RPMs. This is as expected again that our thrust will increase as rotation per minute increase. And our collected data is uh, in agreement with our factory result. It's slightly off again. Now the isentropic efficiency of the compressor. Here are my equations that I used to calculate. I found uh, my theoretical temperature output first and then plugged it into my efficiency calculation. And here's a little small selection of the data showing that as uh, RPMs increase, the efficiency drops. And here's the actual plot for it. And what I understood this is, is that as the compressor is uh, having higher load put onto it, it's not going to perform as well as the engine is running faster, there's more air being pushed through. Then finally, on to compressor and turbine work. We have 
the same values at every RPM, just with a negative sign. Again, as I said, it's the, uh, it's the turbine that's driving the compressor, so work in equals work out, which makes sense here. Final conclusion, uh, my temperature final was here, the temperature four without the experiment, um, which wasn't showing the factory results, which I found odd. I chalk this up to just the fact that uh, as the smaller we're working with, the temperature being expelled, it's a high pressure situation and a high speed, and that could possibly be why we have a higher temperature there. We looked at the braking cycle, we looked at calculations we used back in thermo that I hadn't used in forever. And one of the biggest things I learned from this experiment is how important it actually is to do the procedure and not just have the data because some of the things that were all for us, I couldn't tell why and I had no explanation because I hadn't actually looked at the machine. With that, we'll close and anyone has any questions.